Hey book folk, my name is Ariel and welcome to or welcome back to A Cup of Books. Today I am going to be doing a fun little haul. So recently I went to California where one of my very good friends was getting married. It was very beautiful, very very excited for both of them. But while I was there I was also with some of my other very good friends, one of whom is a fellow bookworm. And so of course because I was staying with her, we decided to go to a couple used bookstores that she had heard about, that I had heard about, that I was really interested in checking out. One of them was called The Iliad. The Iliad was in North Hollywood, and I wish I had gotten a picture of the exterior because they had these beautiful sculpted books. I'll see if I can find a picture online, and if I can, I will pop that into here. But it was a really, really cool used bookstore. First of all, I had two very cool store cats. Normally, I avoid cats like the plague as I am allergic to them, but I do like animals on a, on, like as a whole. So it was really fun to see them. They were literally just hanging out on the bookshelves, which was awesome. They had a pretty decent hardcover sci-fi and fantasy selection, and then I kind of moved towards the back of the store, and that is where I got in trouble. They had one of the most extensive collections of old school science fiction and fantasy books in like the old school... I mean, you'll see what it looks like shortly. Like the old school mass market paperbacks that were almost like pocket size, like couldn't fit in the back pocket of your pants. Um, and they were just beautiful, beautiful covers, like the 60s, 70s, 80s, old school science fiction fantasy covers, which is like one of the few times I actually like people on the covers of my books because I just like the way that they did them. It's more of an illustration than a lot of the books I see today where it's almost like a photo and then they kind of doctor the photo. Anywho, they had just this extensive, extensive collection and they had authors that like you have a hard time finding their books. So that was really cool. And then the other bookstore we actually went to was in Norwich, California, which is a little bit outside of where I was staying. Um, it's not, I don't think it's technically considered part of LA County. I'm not sure, but it was the $10 or less bookstore and they also had a very excellent collection. So I thought it would be really fun to show you what I bought. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. So the first book that I picked up was actually a book that I picked up for my husband because I just thought it was a really neat cover and he's read this book and wants to reread it. And that is Starship Troopers by um, Robert A. Heinlein. This is a classic science fiction book that portrays what it's like to be a soldier in the military. And from what little I know about this series, the whole premise is that these are soldiers that are sent to a planet, maybe it's on Earth, I'm not entirely sure, and they fight these weird like bug creatures. It's supposed to be a really good depiction of, of being a grunt soldier, so not necessarily in a position of leadership, but where you're just kind of told what to do and what your life is like. So I thought this cover was really great. And I'll like do some little inserts of just like photos or like a little video just of the books themselves so you can see them a little better. So I knew I had to get this for him. It really just was like a neat little gift to bring back for him. So that was very cool. Actually, when I purchased this one, this one came from the $10 or less store and I got up to the register and the uh, cashier who was ringing me out was like, oh my gosh, this is like one of my favorite books of all time. I was looking for this book the other day and I couldn't find it. I've never seen this cover. You could tell he was really upset that I found this cover and kind of stole it from him. So. Sorry about that, but my husband was really excited when I handed this to him. The next one is kind of a classic fantasy alternative history one, I think. I don't know a whole lot about it, but I do know that it's one of my mother's favorite old school fantasy books. And that is Clan of the Cave Bear by Jean M. I think you pronounce her last name Ol? It's A-U-L-E. This is like one of the original... I think like epic fantasies and what's really interesting is a lot of time I don't see this book shelved in fantasy I actually see it shelved in general fiction I think because it's more of alternative history than actual fantasy I don't believe there's any magic in here but I do know that it's a saga about just these people living in this kind of prehistoric world I know that there is a main character and she gets lost and she's sort of classically white European so you know there's that and she gets lost and she gets found and adopted by a sort of um, Neanderthal like people and then I think everything sort of happens from there because they think she's like 
a goddess or something or like a manifestation of a spirit or something that they worship. Like I said, I don't know a whole lot about this, but I did remember that this is one of my mother's favorite books and I just wanted to check it out. And again, I thought this cover was stunning. Um, so really excited to read that. It's again, like just like a nice mass market. I just feel like some of these older mass markets are just really well made. I feel like they don't fall apart as easily. And this edition is from, let's see, this is like when there was only three books in the series out. So that should tell you a lot right there. This one is from 1980. And I think the Heinlein one was, this one's from 1959. That's really freaking cool. We're going to look at the years on the rest of these. The next one I got is actually um, an author that I've talked a lot about on the channel, and that is Tamora Pierce. But this is actually one of her series that's not based in Tortal. This is her other series, which I've never actually read. And this is actually the second book in the series, but I saw this, and these are so hard to find that even though I hadn't read the first one, nor do I own the first one, I just decided to get it. I believe the series is called Circle of Magic. Yeah, it's called Circle of Magic and then each of the books is named after the character that it sort of focuses on. So I think in each book you follow a different cast, a uh, different main character um, and they all interweave together. So this is book two, Triss's book. Um, so I'm gonna be on the hunt for the first book, which I think is, which is Sandri's book. And I don't know what the other two characters are, but I just saw this and like I said, this is straight out of my childhood. So I just decided to grab it, even though I've never read the series and I don't own the first book because I just want to read all of Tamora Pierce's books and own all of them in some form. So I just had to grab this. And this one was published in, this is probably in like the 90s, I would think. Let's see, 98. So this is a much later fantasy book and it's YA. Um, but again, I just had to grab it because I love Tamora Pierce, probably my all time favorite author if you haven't gathered that. But, so this was a really great find. The next one is another one by an author that I've spoken about very recently, in particular in my nostalgia haul, and that is Jane Linksgold. And this is called Marks of Our Brothers. I have never heard of this book. Um, I think it's one of her earlier books. I have absolutely no idea what it's about. I just thought the cover was cool. Uh, it says that it's an ex-con and expert linguist Karen Saber is a dangerous loose cannon plotting an appropriate revenge on her co-directors for the murder of her mentor. But Karen's blood vendetta is about to be drastically compromised by events transpiring on a distant world. So I think this, this is actually science fiction, maybe with a little bit of fantasy, but... It sounded really awesome, and one of the things I like about Jane Ling's Gold is usually her female heroines are very, very strong. This sounded really awesome. I don't know, I just, there was a lot of Jane Ling's Gold books there, and I just, on some level, didn't know where to start. A lot of it were ones that I already owned, like it was the Firekeeper Saga. Um, they had a signed book that I was really tempted by, but I already owned it, and I just, I don't know, I don't, I probably should have bought it, but, so, I just grabbed this one because, again, it was one I had never heard of. It sounded like it's the beginning of a series or possibly a standalone. I'll let you know. This will probably be added into, like, that backlist reading vlog series that I'm currently working on doing. But um, I just thought it was really neat. We have an anthropomorphized meerkat thing in the bottom, uh, bottom corner, so I'm kind of interested to find out what that's about. There's also, like, a giant dinosaur thing. I don't know. This gave me Labyrinth vibes with the cover, but... So that was a really fun find. And this one was printed in, oh, this was much later too. So this was 95. This wasn't an 80s cover like I thought, but the art style still was kind of reminiscent of that old school sci-fi fantasy. Cause I don't really know when we started to move away from that. But, so that was the Jane Ling's gold find. The next two I'm gonna hold up together because they're actually by the same author and I want to interject a little bit about this author. This author is just kind of one that I want to learn more about. So the author's name is Andre Norton. Andre Norton is actually a lady. 
her given name I think was Alice Norton. I was trying to do a little bit of research on her, but she basically was one of the like original, I think she's kind of one of our original like fantasy science fiction authors. And she changed her name from Alice Norton to Andre Norton because in the time that she was writing, she knew that science fiction and fantasy was particularly marketed toward boys and men. So she thought if she changed her name to a more masculine sounding name that she would actually be more likely to be published and read. But I mean, she has, I was looking up her list of books and she actually has multiple pen names. I think there's also Alexander Norton or Alan Norton. I don't know. She had like three separate pen names in which she wrote a lot of books. She was also a university librarian or something like that. And I think at like a prolific university, it may have been Harvard. I'm not sure. I need to do some more research on her because she just sounds cool. And there's actually a science fiction book award named after her. It's the Andre Norton Award. And I believe it's centered on middle grade and YA. But I just thought this woman was so cool. <laughs> I always thought this was a man. Apparently it's not. So the two that I found were the first one is called Cat's Eye. It has a really creepy cover. My understanding is this is set on a distant planet and we have a main character who is looking for a job and he is assigned a job by this system that's kind of artificial intelligence that has information about everyone and he gets assigned to this job at this pet shop where they are trafficking animals from our world among with others and then I'm not sure what happens from there but that sounded really interesting. And then the other one is a series that is a brand new series, but it is set in a world that Andre Norton is most well known for, and that was her Witch World novels. I could not find the first book in the Witch World despite the sheer volume of Andre Norton books that they had. They didn't seem to have the very first Witch World novel. They had a lot of her other Witch World novels. That's something I'm going to have to get into at some point. But this one was this was this new series just set in that world. So I didn't think it would be too big of a deal to start with this one. And this one is called Where Hawk. And I am not sure what this is about. This one does have magic. So this is more of a fantasy one. And I think it's a classic good versus evil. I'm assuming just based on calling it a werehawk that maybe these people are kind of like able to turn into hawks. I'm probably totally off base because I realized it's not spelled the way you'd spell werewolf, but I just thought this was cool. And again, the cover, I just, I'm discovering that I really like collecting these like old school fantasy science fiction covers. This one was published in, probably gonna be off base again, it's probably in the 90s. Oh no, this one was 1983. Cat's Eye. Cat's Eye feels older, even the pages are much more yellowed. I can't find a copyright on Cat's Eye. That's interesting. Huh, can't find it. I thought this was really interesting though. There's like an ad for cigarettes in here, which I didn't know was something that was done way back when. But I'll have to look this one up. I, oh, there we go. Nope, that just says Ace Books, which I actually don't think Ace Books even exists anymore. Oh, 1961. So she's been around for quite some time. I mean, she's deceased at this point, but um, yeah. So those were the two Andre Norton finds. Very excited to check her out for the first time. The next two books were actually part of, I think, a duology, and this is a, an author you may be familiar with for something else, and that is Anne McCaffrey. This is her Crystal Singer series. Uh, again, sort of a combination of science fiction and fantasy. Anne McCaffrey wrote the Dragon Riders of Pern books. Um, I guarantee if you've walked down an aisle in any bookstore and walked through science fiction and fantasy that you've seen her name. She has written a lot, most of which I think is set in Pern, a lot of it set elsewhere. Um, I actually have a third book that I also got that was a separate one called To Ride Pegasus. Um, she's just like one of those authors that like I've read a lot of her Dragon Rider of Pern books when I was younger. I don't remember a lot of them. And then these just sounded really cool. This has something to do with like 
vocalizing to manipulate crystals to use their magic. And this one, I mean, I'm assuming just has to do with riding Pegasus's. Pegas Pegasus's? Pegasus? Peg How do you say multiple Pegasus? I think it might be like Moose and you just say Pegasus. Okay, well now that I've had that, like, language epiphany, let's move on. It just sounded good. Like I said, this is kind of an OG fantasy author. I guarantee you've seen her books if you've not seen these ones. So really excited to read these. And that was actually it. I mean, I have solid little haul if I am being honest. Let's see, we've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we've got nine old school backlisted fantasy. Eight for me, one for someone else. Um, I seriously could have bought significantly more. There were so many books there that I was tempted by, but I was limited because I only brought a carry-on suitcase with me. I know, mistakes were made. So definitely looking forward to going there again when I visit my friends. In particular, I want to go back to the Iliad bookshop. I just thought that shop was great. If you're in North Hollywood or in the LA area and can get up there, I highly recommend going up there. They had so much stuff. I mean, I saw so much middle grade and YA. I saw Hardy Boys. I saw Nancy Drew. I saw more modern things. I didn't see like super recently published things because like I said, this is all used and backlisted titles, but just there was so much there. That's like one of those places you could spend hours and probably find some really cool gems. But that about wraps up my used bookstore from Los Angeles haul. I am really looking forward to reading a lot of these at some point. <laughs> this is like the continual thing, but at the very least, these are nice additions to my science fiction and fantasy collection and probably the start of collecting these older covers because, like I said, I just love them. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. If you made it this far, leave a little cat emoji since Iliad had their two shop cats. And tell me if you've heard of any of these. I seriously doubt it. I had never heard of them. And I don't mean that as a disservice to anyone watching. These, There's just so much backlist fantasy that we know nothing about. So it's really fun to come across them. And if there's one that in particular you're excited to hear about, let me know. Maybe I'll try to prioritize that one and do a vlog around it. But as always, thank you again for being here. Bye.